Welcome back, fellow Tinkercad friends. Uh, today, we're going to cover all of these tools up here, and they're very versatile tools, and they will really help you in your design journey. So let's get right to it. Um, we've covered this light bulb just to refresh your memory. If you drag out an object and then you click Control H, it will actually hide the object. Uh, it's helpful if you have a bunch of objects here and it's a clutter and a mess and you want to hide some objects. To unhide, you simply click this uh, light bulb there. So let's start by discussing what group and ungroup is. It's actually quite simple. So let's drag out a cylinder and we have a cylinder and a square here. Now let's say we wanted to make this one object. We can simply select both with the selection window or by clicking on one and then shift clicking on the other and then just going to group them. Once you group them, they now act as one solid object. And if you wanted to modify the cylinder prior to grouping them, all you would have to do is you would select it and you would ungroup. And you can group and ungroup whenever you please. One thing to keep in mind, if you have several objects and then you group these objects together, if you go to ungroup them, even if you just select the square and the cylinder on the right hand side, all of the objects are going to get ungrouped. So now that we understand a little bit about grouping and ungrouping, let's discuss what holes are. So hole is a very uh, useful tool. It's essentially anything you see in the world can be redesigned by adding and subtracting from a certain shape. Uh, similarly to how you see sculptors carving away at a solid and all of a sudden it becomes a beautiful statue or if you've ever seen how ice sculptures are made. So for instance, if we want to create an opening in this square, in this box, and we have this cylinder here, we can actually turn the cylinder by clicking it and clicking hole, we're turning it into a hole. Now an easy way to understand holes is to imagine that this is an eraser. Think of holes as an eraser. Because if we now group the two together by selecting both of them, either shift clicking selecting or selecting them using the window, if we group them together, the eraser or the hole will actually cut away at whatever it was touching. And this is very, very useful, especially later on when you start creating intricate designs because you get to carve out certain shapes with holes. And let me just quickly show you an example of that and also illustrate how a line works. So we've covered group, ungroup, which can also be achieved by control G to group and control shift G to ungroup. By the way, I have all of these keyboard shortcuts on my website that I created for you guys. It'll be in the description or you could go to promoambitions.com forward slash Tinkercad. I'll pull it up here. It'll essentially look like this. All the keyboard shortcuts and we're going to have all my tutorials down here. And as you can see, we're currently filming this one. That's why it's not up. So let's get back to it. Let's create an intricate shape using the align as well as the group tool. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here and now is a good time to talk about all the different options that Tinkercad provides. So if you hit this um, down arrow key, you can access text and numbers, you can access characters, you can access connectors. There's a whole slew of options which Tinkercad provides for you. So if you go to characters, you can even do a piece hand, you could do a scuba mask. There's a lot here. So let's just for the purpose of this tutorial stick to the basic shapes and try to see how we can create an intricate shape. Let's drag out this icosahedron. That's kind of new. So let's drag it out, put it somewhere in the middle and we're going to go and grab a sphere and also drag it out. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the dimension of the sphere and if you guys recall how to uniform scale you simply shift and click. So if we shift and click on this corner here, we are now uniform scaling it. But you see the numbers changing in decimal points and kind of randomly. We can adjust for that by simply clicking it, clicking on the number and inputting whatever we desire. For this, I'm going to go with 16. So if we input 16, 
everything changes to 16, including the height, because we were uniform scaling. If we did it just randomly, we would have to input it for both of these sides and for the height. So now that we have it at 16, what I want to achieve is perfectly, I want to perfectly place this sphere in the center of this shape right here. Now, how can we achieve that? We can attempt to do it with our keyboard shortcuts or to float it around and try to get it right in the center. But realistically, we will never be able to achieve that. That is why the align tool is so helpful. It's one of my favorite tools. So to access the align tool, you either have to first select two objects and then you have to align them by either clicking on the icon align that's right here or pressing L. So let's try it by just pressing L. Boom. So if we press L, we get this grid. It looks complicated at first, but it's actually so, so simple. So what does this mean? Right now, let's just work with these three buttons here. And the nice thing is if you hover over them, it actually tells you the action that is going to occur. So you can see if we press this, it's going to line up this object with the top of this sphere. So if we click it, they are now perfectly aligned as far as this line is concerned. If we click the center, they will align them to be in the center of each other. And if we click the bottom, we could see there's a yellow halo around the sphere showing it will be lower because it will be exactly matched up to the bottom. Now, the same goes for these three right here. We'll call this width, we'll call this length, and we'll call this height. So the width, if we want to align them to be in the center, we simply click this and they're now in the center and it's designated by a gray rather than a black uh, dot. And if we wanted to align it to the side, we can now see it's aligned to the side, but we're trying to achieve it in the center. So we click center, then we go here, we click center, and then we go to the height and we also click center. Now we're going to create an interesting shape by creating a hole out of this blue shape. So if we click on the, if we click away to get rid of the align because it's already aligned, if we click on the blue sphere, we're now going to see that in our manipulation um, panel, we can make this a hole. We can also achieve the same thing by pressing H. So if we press H, the sphere is now a hole. And just to show you, I'm going to move it away so that you could see it's now transparent and it's a hole. Now let me go to undo, to undo the move. And what's going to happen now is when I group these together and I go to group, the sphere is going to delete everything away from the red shape that it's touching. So let's see what happens. So once I go to group, it actually cut away at this shape and it created a very very interesting beautiful shape honestly uh just more interesting than i thought it would look and this is how you can start creating very very advanced intricate shapes now to cover the align and also the flip tool as well we're going to create a cone from scratch and i think this is good practice because it will also remind us of how to do some of the operations that we did previously in other tutorials and this will be a good reminder for it. So let's drag out a box and we have the manipulation panel here. Let's adjust it. So let's tweak the width to let's say 30. Let's tweak the length to 30 as well. And we're going to try to build out the base of the cone, which is usually quite flat. So let's make the height four. Once we do that, this is a nice rectangular base. However, I would like it to be a little bit more smoothed out. And if you recall, we can achieve that by simply increasing the radius to smooth it out. Let's see how that looks. I actually like that. I'm going to keep that. Now I'm going to go ahead and drag out a cone. Now, in order to place this cone directly in the center of the base, we're going to use our align tool. So we click away to deselect it. Now we're going to select both using the selection window and we're going to go to align. We can achieve that by simply clicking L. 
So if we click L, we see that we now have the option to align this cone and we're going to align it center here, center here. And you see how we didn't have to do anything if this was already gray. That's because we're working on this plane and both of them are touching the plane. So they're already aligned. That's why this option isn't available. However, if we click this, we can align it in the middle, but we want to achieve this. So now that they're both aligned the way we would like it to, um, the cone doesn't exactly, it's kind of short. So we want to make it a bit taller. So we're going to go ahead and do that. If we click on the cone, uh, so we have to click away to get rid of align. So click away from the objects that are aligned. And if we click on the cone, now we can manipulate the cone a little bit. So if I recall correctly, we had this as 30 by 30 and it's asking us for the base radius. So let's make that, let's make it 14 because that would be slightly less than 15. And yeah, I kind of like how that looks. You could see the purple base kind of coming through the red, which is very helpful. We can see that it's perfectly aligned as well. So now that we have that here, let's increase the radius and let's increase it to, let's say 30. Let's see how that looks. It's looking more like a cone, but I actually want it a little taller. So let's say 35. I like that. I like that a lot actually. And the top radius is probably gonna smooth out this edge here. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, it's a bit too much. Let's try and just make it one. Let's see what happens there. I'm actually not liking that. So I'm gonna leave it, uh, I'm gonna leave it at zero. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna group this because we like the way it's positioned and we wanna lock it in. So once it's grouped, now we see that if we try to move the cone, it moves together. Now we're not done quite yet because a cone typically has a circle here in the middle and it also is hollowed out. Now this is a good time to review hull and show you exactly how we, how we would achieve this. So if we click on the cone and we click duplicate and we zoom out a little bit, we can recall that we can now extract out an exact copy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use this bottom piece as a hole to hollow out the cone that we've created. So let's leave that there and we can dictate how far down we moved it by simply entering a different variable here. So let's say minus five. So now that we have that, we can take this bottom cone, turn it into a hole and actually delete from the original cone. How do we achieve that? Again, we group both items, we click group. And now it might be difficult to, to actually tell but we've hollowed out this cone. Now lastly, what we'd like to do is to create a hole up here. We can achieve that again quite simply by taking a cylinder. Actually, um, if I recall correctly, Tinkercad already has a whole cylinder. Uh, let's go back to basic shape. So if we scroll up, there's a whole cylinder here already. I would like to resize the shape of this cylinder so we can accurately cut a hole through here and it's to the dimension that we would like it to be. So if we click this corner here, we can actually dictate how um, wide and how long this cone is. So let's keep it a cone and make it 1.5 by 1.5. So now it's a very, very thin cone. And let's actually increase this to let's say 45. Now, whenever you're cutting something in an object, you wanna make it larger so you could see it when you position it. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. So let's now align this to be right in the center by selecting both items, going to align and aligning it to be in the center. Now, as you could see, it's nice to have it much longer so that we can actually see that it's cutting through the cone. It's actually starting to look like a Christmas tree. Uh, Christmas just passed over here, so it's appropriate. But to cut away a hole in this cone, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select both and we're gonna group them together. 
And now you see that we've cut a small hole right in the center. And we could see that by navigating around and actually seeing that the hole is in fact there. Now we have to cover what flip is. And an easy way to do this uh, is to simply click on an object and use the shortcut key M or you can click on the icon itself and it will give you the option of how to flip this cone. So let's say we wanted to flip it upside down. We can simply click it here and it flips upside down. Now these, when we click, it'll almost seem as nothing is happening, but something is in fact happening. It's just because this is a symmetrical shape. When it's flipped on its axis, we can't really see the difference. Okay, so now that we've covered all of these tools up here, in the next video, we're going to touch upon work plane and ruler, and I'll show you some more advanced stuff by building out the rest of this cone here. And uh, work plane is actually very, very useful. Uh, it used to not be available a few years ago, and I'm happy to see that Tinkercad introduced it back. I hope this video uh, helped you understand these tools up here. Uh, please do like and subscribe to the video. We're well on our way to mastering this program. And I appreciate you guys watching.